So there's a cheetah on the hunt, right? And she spots some prey, and she's like, whatever that is looks delicious, and she starts chasing it. They try a little distraction tactic, but she's not having it, stays on after the first one, and then bang, sharp right, and the cheetah's like, holy crap, this thing can run. But now they're on a straightaway, and she's like, screw this, I'm the fastest land animal. And she's right up on it, and she looks over, and ah! What the fuck? Look at her. <laughs> She's like, get me out of here. And now the warthog's chasing the cheetah until the cheetah stops and says, what the hell was that? And her buddy comes over and says, what happened? And she's like, I don't know, but that thing looked like a baby elephant trying to kick its way out of a cow's face. Meanwhile, the warthog's like, suck it, cheetah. But let's back up a bit. Warthogs are part of a group of animals in the family Suidae. You've heard of pigs, right? Well, they're in that family too in the genus Sus. There's like a billion pigs and no one seems worried about it. What happened was they used to be wild pigs. But then a group of them said, we're going to cozy up to the humans. They seem nice. What could possibly go wrong? So the humans asked, what do you like to eat? The pig said, everything. Everything? Really? What about shit? Yep, we're not mad at it. And that gave the humans an idea. This is called a pig toilet. It's an outhouse on top of a pigsty, and the pigs eat the poop and the people eat the pigs. It's like that Circle of Life song in The Lion King, but reimagined by a German fetish pornographer. Anyway, now there's over a billion of them, and they're up to something, because they're smart. But listen about the mazes. Scientists keep putting pigs in mazes, and then they're like, oh my god, the pigs solved the maze. But meanwhile, have you ever been in a forest? It's like nature's Ikea. It's impossible not to get lost. But pigs do fine in there. They can even sense the direction of Earth's magnetic field. So they're probably doing the mazes easily and saying the humans seem smart, but their architecture is really unnecessarily complicated. We'll have to redo it when we take over. And that's what's happening, people. If you need proof, look at this. They only use two tippy toes on each leg to walk. So why do they need the other two in back? I'll tell you why. They're keeping them around to operate our computers and machinery. And if you didn't even hear what I just said, because you're all like, look at the cute pig with the soccer ball, well, you're falling for their scheme. They made their way in the storybooks and the motion pictures. Look at the piglet, look at the piglet. Never mind, there's a billion of them. And here's the deal with the piglets. There's a dark side there. Sure, they're cute, but piglets are one of the only mammals to be born with weapons designed to be used against their own siblings. They're born with two pairs of canines and two pairs of incisors, top and bottom. These teeth are angled in such a way that they create a vicious side bite, perfect for lacerating someone's face who's going after a nipple with your name on it. And that's what they do. They fight for a nipple and then they stick with it. And they have to do it fast, too. The first 24 hours or so are crucial. That's when the mother's milk contains colostrum, which the babies need to establish their immune system. You know what else the babies get from their mother? A bunch of healthy gut bacteria. You know how they get it? They eat her poop. So while you were all cuddled up in a onesie getting a lullaby, the pig babies are getting bit in the face and eating shit. Put that in the prequel to Charlotte's Web. Anyway, even if you do get a nipple, they're not all created equal. The ones up front near the head, they work better, and the stronger piglets usually get those. The ones in the back are janky, like when you try to get soda from a dispenser that's running out. You know, when it sort of sputter farts a couple drops into your cup. The runts are back there, sucking the hind tit. And sometimes they need a little extra. Females in the same group will often let piglets from another mother suckle. Think Airbnb, but for nipples. What's crazy is this might result in their own biological child starving to death. It's a whole Game of Thrones thing, and the weak ones don't make it. Now, if you think that being a pig baby is hardcore, you should see the hoopla that the parents go through to make them. These are Suscrofa, the wild pigs in the lineage that gave us the domesticated ones. The females live in groups of about three to five along with their young children. The males kind of do their own thing until mating season. It happens once a year, so you can imagine there's some pent-up sexual energy. As far as I know, they don't know how to masturbate, and yes, I googled it. I'm googling it right now. If you're an advertiser trying to target me, those are the kinds of keywords you're going to have to use. Anyway, around mating season, the males go through some changes. They basically stop eating, which is weird considering what's ahead of them. But scientists think that it... Oh, sorry. But scientists think it might have something to do with all the hormones and the saliva. And there's a lot of saliva. Now, this isn't your mom's saliva. This is the real stuff, and it's got some stank to it. This saliva contains sexy pheromones that are powerful enough to advance the onset of puberty in young females who get a whiff. One of these pheromones is endosterone, which is also found in truffles. Truffles are like underground mushrooms that give off a smell to entice animals to dig them up and spread their seeds or spores. A pig can smell one of these at a depth of three feet. 
So people assume that the truffle was tricking the pig by smelling like sex. Sort of like if there was a flavored Dorito and you lost one in the couch cushion. You'd be digging around in there. But then of course a scientist had to do an experiment to see if it was true. And it wasn't. It was a different compound, dimethyl sulfide, that the pigs were smelling for. And once again science ruined a perfectly good story. Anyway, I digress. So this male, who is very horny and hungry at this point, tries to find a group of females to wipe his spit on with the hopes of getting them horny too and then it's a party. The problem is there's other males doing the same thing, so it's lucky they have the padding. During mating season the males develop this thick layer of tissue almost like cartilage under their skin on their backs and shoulders. This helps because the males beat the living sh** out of each other. A lot of their fighting involves jockeying for position and then lacerating the side of their opponent. They've got good weapons for it, too. On each side, both of their canines point upwards. This is because their alveolar process, or bony thing that contains the tooth socket, is rotated outwards. On the warthog, it's even more pronounced. But of course, because nature's crazy, there's a suet that took this to the extreme. The Babarusa broke off from the other suets about 12 million years ago. They wound up on these islands in Indonesia, and life is good. No natural predators, a good amount of food. They only have two or three babies at a time, so the siblings aren't trying to kill each other. So they've had some nice quality time to evolve into their true form which happens to be goth. Demon goth. They look crazy. <laughs> sort of a Satan's unicorn vibe. Their alveolar process has rotated so far that their teeth emerge through the skin on their face. They don't stop growing either, and if they're not tended to, they can curl around and pierce the skin again. Babarusa not impressed with your tongue piercing. For a while, people thought that the upper tusks might play a defensive role in combat, sort of like a face protector. But the extreme rotation of the alveolar process means that the roots of these teeth are quite shallow, making them too brittle to be effective. And their fights, to be honest, look a bit more like macho hugging. Oh yeah, you call that a hug? How about this one? Yeah, it's tight. A tight, warm, fuzzy hug. Warthogs fight more like those bros who get up all into each other's face and get really close so they're almost kissing. But not kissing. But they could kiss if they wanted to. Unlike the Babarusa, the warthog has plenty of natural predators. So the warthog evolved these long legs so they could run. The problem is that moved their face farther away from the ground, which is where their food is. So when they eat, they have to kneel down. But it's not regular kneeling, it's wrist kneeling. Here, flop both of your wrists down like you're pretending to be a bunny. That's what they're walking on, the backs of their wrists. They're creative, they have solutions for all sorts of things. For example, look at all those bugs. That must be annoying. Well, when it's wet out, they take a mud bath. It's cooling and it keeps the bugs and ticks and other parasites away. But in the dry season, there's not enough mud to go around, so they figured something else out. They enlist the mongooses. Wait, Jenny, is it mongooses or mongeese? No, not monkeys, Jerry, monkeys. All right, they enlist many a mongoose to eat their dicks. Well, now you made that sound inappropriate, Jerry. Think, Jerry, the mongoose is not eating the warthog's dick. Hmm. Well, yes, they do get close to it, don't they? That's trust right there. I mean, that's the definition of trust, isn't it? How close will you allow someone's teeth to your genitals? Well, that's flattering, Jerry, but I, I meant it as a rhetorical question. No, I don't want to answer it for you. Fine, three inches. Well, I know that's farther than what you said, Jerry. Well, it's close. Jerry, you don't use the bleep button just because you have hurt feelings. No, don't do it, Jerry.